So I'm delighted to say, as promised, joining us once again on the We Are West Ham podcast is Stel from This Is Mapa, a separate football podcast, to look back and ahead to the Europa Conference League games with AEK Larnica. Michel Antonio scored two as West Ham won 2-0 in Cyprus last Thursday. A fairly routine win, I would argue, putting the Hammers in a very good position ahead of Thursday night's return leg at London Stadium. Still, great to have you back on the podcast with us. Thanks very much for your time. I understand you're a very, very busy man indeed this afternoon. But do uh, let us know, first of all, what you thought of the game last week. Well, thanks for having me on again. Really appreciate it. Um, As for last week's game, it kind of went the way that I expected it to go, in all fairness. I I did say I, I thought it was going to be a one all draw, but that was my heart talking more than anything. To be honest, I, as I said on the pod, West Ham are levels ahead in terms of ability, fitness, stamina. And uh, let's get it right. Ayek put in a, a very, very good effort. It was a valiant effort, especially second half. But effectively, the game was over when uh, mm-hmm. Antonio scored the, the second goal, which is a peach of a goal. And they kind of played the way they expected them to do, trying to get balls in the box, um, overload the box, put crosses from wide areas. But look, the, the golfing class was there to, to be seen, mate. Honestly, it was, it was blatantly obvious. And I fear for them second leg, especially what's been happening in the past couple of days with, with that club. Yeah. Well, I mean, what for, for those listeners of ours who don't know, what, what's sort of been going on? What's been going down? Well, they played yesterday against Abolon. Abolon, the club that won the title last season. And they've had a very, very odd season. They're into their fourth head coach, And um, they've had issues on and off the field, be it fans setting fire to the stadium, be it a whole load of drama. Um, They they want the board to resign. The board have basically said they're going to resign at the end of the season, although the president is still umming and ahhing about it. But anyway, that's that's another club. But Ike played them last night and Ike needed to win to to go top or at least stay in contention of winning the title because they've dropped off since drawing West Ham, believe it or not. Mm. Um, and they lost 1-0, but they were down to 10 men after eight minutes. They had the player, Gus Ledes, sent off um, for a really reckless challenge. Um, and I put that down to fatigue more than anything. And in the 92nd minute, they had another player sent off for basically grabbing another player by the throat. And it's like they're, they're losing the plot. You can tell that the energy levels aren't what they were at the beginning of the season. You can tell the players are getting frustrated and to... To compound their misery, their technical director, Javi Rocca, was accused by the fourth official of uh, assaulting him. Now, cool. prior, to, pre, yeah, prior to me jumping on the, this, this particular pod, I was actually watching a, a statement given by Javi Rocca at the airport before Larnica left to, mm. to come to London. And he basically said, look, this fourth official is lying. He basically put his hands on me and I pushed mm. him away. And he's in his referees report, he, he made three accusations which aren't true. So... This is gonna this is gonna rumble on for a long time. And look, I support a club in Cyprus called Omonia, and our rivals are Abuel. And there's this notion by many many clubs in Cyprus that Abuel have got the Cypriot FA in their back pocket, and because mm. they're neck and neck with Ayek, okay, they're they're ahead of him, ahead of them by a couple of points. But other clubs are getting strange decisions go against them lately. And I'm not going to go into it because people are going to say, oh, you're not being imp- you're not being impartial, but you're getting a lot of people questioning what's happening in Cyprus now. Um, and uh, I'm pretty sure that Ike will be releasing a few statements in the coming days, especially after the West Ham game. So there's a lot of drama in Cyprus, mate. There's a lot of drama. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, to be honest, obviously, aside from all that, and you gave us a taste of it last week when you were on, that the, yeah, it's a bit of a, it's, it's, it's quite eventful, should we say, Cypriot football. Uh, week in, week out, lots of stuff going on, on and off the pitch. I'll be honest, though, I thought, you've mentioned the golfing class. Look, I'm, it's, it's good of you, refreshing to call it as it is. It's, there's no sort of, um, I don't think anyone was being too condescending from the West Ham side. I think you, it was clear West Ham, I would argue, won that game probably in, in third gear or whatever. But overall, I thought sort of atmosphere, occasion, stadium, like the the football and all that. I put up a, a pretty good like, advert for Cypriot football. Yeah, up until the goal, I think they played very well, in all fairness. But they're a naive team still. And that's because of the way that they play. Um, They were caught on the counter-attack on numerous occasions. And if it weren't for the the final ball not being good enough from West Ham's perspective or the finishing not being good enough, it would have been 4 or 5 nil by by half-time. And and it could have been more. I know Antonio hit the post at the beginning of the second half 
that would have wrapped up the tie. You know, I mean, I still think it's done anyway, but that would have yeah. completely put the put the nail in the coffin. But again, I think they they conducted themselves well. But at the same time, I think West Ham played in second gear for most of that game, and there yeah. were occasions in the second half where you could see gaps in between West Ham's midfield and and the defenders. And I'm thinking, you guys need to exploit it, but they just weren't doing it. And it was the same predictable system that I could have been playing all season, get the ball out wide and try to try to hit them. But look, there, there are some players that I believe can hold their head up high. Um, I think Rosales, who played right wing, he's actually a right back and he mm. played right wing to to prevent the, the crosses coming in from the left-hand side. And ironically, it was his slip that let the cross come in the box, which Antonio finished. So I think they did well in all fairness. But again, as I mentioned, the, the golfing class is too much, man. Yeah, yeah, I totally understand that, mate. And I'd, uh, I'm sort of inclined to agree with you there. Uh, there. Was there a guy called Farage or that you yeah, mentioned? Farage, I remember you mentioned yeah. him on the podcast last week and I thought he conducted himself pretty well, looked like a tidy technical player. Yeah, to be honest, I was surprised that he was on the bench. But then again, he's played the majority of the, ga- the, majority of the games this season and he's been running on fumes for the past couple of weeks. And from a tactical perspective, it did make sense to play uh, Rosales on uh, on the right, but when Farage came on, he you could tell he he's got something about him. And I'm not saying he's Premier League quality, but I think he could do well at say a, a top tier Championship club and mm. maybe uh, improve in that respect. But yeah, he's got plenty in the tank. But there's still a few players at that club that can do it in in other leagues, lesser leagues. So he does said maybe the Championship, mid table Championship. But yeah, it's it's a great adventure for the club and it's a historical game for them. So yeah. In all fairness, when a separate team comes up against a big club, majority of the time they think, well, we're not going to get anything out of it, but it's the experience. You know, I know yeah, I've got a link with Baralimni as well, which is another club in Cyprus. So for them to have an English club, a Premier League club coming to Cyprus, it, it's massive for them. And obviously there's money coming in from TV revenue and gate receipts, et cetera, et cetera. So, and look, there was no trouble, which is great. No, quite, um, no. Which, which is fantastic. Yeah, overall, mate, it's sort of pretty... Uh, good advert. So you've mentioned already Stel, and I mean, I am of the same opinion that oh, I don't feel particularly, you know, that there's any chance of West Ham not progressing through to the next round. But how do you, you sort of, you know, what, what do you make of that game Thursday then, this return leg? How, how do you think Larnacle will approach that? Is it, you mentioned the stuff that's going on in the league and they're, they're hunting a domestic title, their first one for quite a long time. Um do you after the first leg do they sort of go or oh, okay kind of out of this and do they prioritize the league again or how do you think they're going to approach it well i think it's going to be much of the same as the first leg in all fairness i can't see them you know going firing on all cylinders and just going for the throat straight away because it would be foolish for them to do so they'll, they'll get caught in the counter attack they'll get ripped to shreds and it could be a cricket score by half time yeah. Um, but at the same time, I don't think they're going to play this defensive style of, of football. It's going to be similar to what they did in the first leg. Um, but at the same time, you, you never know. In the last 20 minutes or maybe in the last half an hour, if there is, if it's still nil-nil and two-nil in aggregate, will they go full pelt? I, I really don't know. But look, it's it's a, it's a special occasion for them. London Stadium, no Cypriot club has ever been there. Yeah. Um, and I'm pretty sure for, there's loads of you know, Cypriots in, in London anyway. So I'm guessing... There's going to be a, a high allocation of away fans, and from what I've heard, there's still tickets available general sale for the, in the in the West Ham end. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, yeah, definitely, home, mate. Home section. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's a lot of locals going there just for the just for the opportunity to see a Cypriot team. They might not even be football, might even be casual fans. They might even not like football, but the fact that yeah. it's a Cypriot team coming to to London, so yeah, it'll be it'll be a yeah, just some kind of. It'd be like a, I don't know, testimonial. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the that, that's the thing. I think there was a, a sort of an, a bit of an unknown really before before that first leg. What do you what do you expect? Sort of, uh, I don't know what the Cypriot population in in London is. You'll obviously probably be a bit more aware of that, or or in the UK or whatever. Class, mate. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, <laughs> put it this way, Cyprus has only got a million people yeah. as an island, but yeah. I'm guessing there's more Cypriots because we got people in Australia, the UK, America, yeah. various parts of Europe as well. So I think there's more Cyprus outside of, <laughs> outside of <laughs> Cyprus, Cyprus than there is, there in, is in. in Cyprus. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. yeah, a few hundred thousand in the UK, I'm guessing, anyway. Yeah, fair enough, mate. Fair enough. Well, that, it's, yeah, it's, it's an intriguing one, isn't it? Because it's obviously great from a West Ham point of view. Uh, struggles in the league as well. You'd think, from what I saw, like it, it seemed like 
Larnaca were just putting a lot of effort in just to sort of yeah. stay in and around the game. And and you sort of expect the same on Thursday. I expect David Moyes will, will rest a few players, but you'd, even if you know, even if the game just peters out into a nothingness, obviously we've sort of already done enough in the away leg that even yeah. if it was a draw, or a nil-nil draw, or whatever, um, uh, that you know we we progress through. So I think that sort of a unanimous feeling that that that's going to be the case. Are you going to the game Thursday? No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I wanted to go, but work commitments. And, and and family commitments as well makes it yeah, difficult. Yeah. But yeah, no, to be honest, I don't want to go there and watch a watch a hammering. You know, I don't want to watch a mauling. I'd, I'd rather stay home and watch it on television. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I feel you, mate. I feel you. Look, well, I mean, yeah, I, I've sort of. What's yeah, before we let you go? Obviously, what give us a score prediction then for Thursday? Uh, um, I'm I'm gonna go three 0 West Ham. I'm gonna go yeah. three 0 West Ham. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. No, I, I've got a feeling. I, I, I can't see it being much more of a high end, like much of a high energy game, similar to, right. to last week. I think West Ham sort of don't really need to get out in that second or third gear. Might be that David Moyes gives a few of the fringe players a chance, and they want to prove themselves a little bit. But um, it's an odd stage of the season now. Anyway, I, I can't see it being much of a spectacle. Made some changes really. at half time, didn't he? Or in the second half, he made quite a few changes, and you know, I think Shkamaka came on. Didn't he come mm. on? Yeah, half. Antonio got a little injury, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. So yeah I, I think do, the players are coming in. That it won't be a problem for West Ham. Honestly, it, it nah. won't be. I can't see it. No, no. I, I quite agree, mate. I quite agree. I, I fancy. A, I don't know. Maybe a one nil. Um, just but You're I just don't, being nice. Just, You're just being nice. No, no. I, I genuinely, <laughs> but I, I think it's because it's one of them where it'll be like we've already got the job done. And it would just be more of a, right, it's a game we have to play. I hope, you know, I, I don't want to come across as patronising, but I just think that after what we saw in the first leg, I think the the golf is so clear. It's certainly not. We're saying I'm not going to be worried about Larnaca peppering our goal with shots, put it that way. So, um, no, but I don't think, I, yeah, I don't think West Ham will be wanting to go gung ho. I think it will just be a, a fairly routine uh, outing, maybe a 1 0 win. Yeah, I mean, the only, the only thing I will say, and I think it's a slim chance of it happening, maybe West Ham being complacent, but I can't see that happening. I don't think David Moyes will allow that to happen. No, I don't think the players are, are unprofessional in that in that respect, that they'll take their foot off the gas. And, you know, they'll probably let Ike play a little bit just to, you know, soak up a bit of pressure if they... But mm. listen, I, I I knew from, from the moment Antonio scored the first goal, yeah. I knew that... West Ham had the handbrake up for the majority of the game. I know that, and I knew it was going to be like that. And they would have to turn it, turn up a gear if they needed to, but they didn't really have to, which is a shame. No. But as I said, second half, at least I gave it a go. And again, yeah. I don't want to be patronising towards them. No, uh, look at two 0 down. They, they gave it their best, but clearly, even crossing in the box, it was being dealt with. Ariola hardly had anything to do. I know. I think they had more corners than West Ham. I think they had like yeah. fourteen or something like that. But yeah. if you don't have any clear-cut opportunities from set pieces, you, you don't deserve anything. But look, West Ham will go through and you know, Ayek, if they can prevent getting hammer, hammered, pardon the pun, they'll, they'll be happy. They'll be happy. Yeah, exactly, mate. Well, let's tell, it's, uh, as I mentioned to you last time, one of my favourite things about doing this podcast and the European run over the last, uh, certainly last season was was chatting to, you know, new fans who, who I might normally... Well, I wouldn't normally chat to or come across. So it's been brilliant having you on uh, to chat about these two games. We really do appreciate your time. Oh, um, you, yeah, good luck with the uh, with the podcast and all that. Just um, let us know. It's, this is Mapper's Cypriot Football Podcast. Let everyone know where they can find your stuff if they uh, want to go and check it out. Yeah, just go on YouTube and type in this is Mapper. It's on the uh, the No Chofters Network, which is another podcast I do, which is for the club I support in Cyprus. Um, we've had. Quite a few big names on over the past few years on the pod. We had Zelias that won the um, won the Euro, uh, UEFA Cup with Inter Milan. He used to play for Omonia, which is my club. Matt Derbyshire, Jordi Gomez, all former Omonia players. And on this current pod that we're doing now, we've got a, a former uh, Crystal Palace and uh, an off-the-sea midfielder coming on hopefully soon. I can't say his name just yet, but I guess just Googling him, you'll, you'll find out who he is. But for yeah. various reasons, I can't say his name just yet because it's not confirmed, but yeah. There you go. Great stuff. Great stuff. Well, that's Stel from This Is Mapa, a Super Football podcast. Really appreciate you giving us your time, mate.